Hi guys. It is a lovely day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Somehow, as a planet, we have stumbled into Friday. Yes, little dog? I know it. I miss you too. I've been away. I've missed you for the 15 seconds since I last saw you. Anyway, it is Friday, August 14th, 2020, and being Friday, oh yes, before I get into this, I am Sam Mitchell, this is Collapse Chronicles, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do every Friday here at Collapse Chronicles for the few people on the planet listening to what I think is the most important video of the week in the Doomosphere, and this is when we go on to Manga Bay dot com to see what Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com are having to tell us about how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour while we're all partying and at Sturgis having a orgasm, fake orgasm contest or whatever they're doing in Sturgis. But before we dive into Manga Bay, uh, let's go over to phys.org. That is P H Y S dot org. I want to thank uh, Kevin for sending me this. Warming Greenland ice sheet passes point of no return. Yes. Nearly 40 years of satellite data from Greenland shows that glaciers on the island have shrunk so much that even if global warming were to stop today, the ice sheet would continue right on shrinking. Wow, the finding published today well, now yesterday in the journal Nature Communications Earth and Environment means that Greenland's glaciers have passed a tipping point of sorts. Have passed a tipping point of sorts. Yes, where the snowfall that replenishes the ice sheet each year cannot keep up with the ice that is now flowing into the ocean from glaciers. So we have another tipping point of sorts to uh, celebrate here at the uh, top end of the earth. But we're going to spend quite a bit of time, we're going to spend a lot of time down in South America. Uh, let's go through the South American news, uh, mostly Brazil, but we're going to start here in Ecuador for the update to this story uh, that I've been talking about for several months now. Ecuador races for emergency infrastructure as rivers collapse now threatens dam. Back in February, Manga Bay was reporting on the disappearance of the San Rafael waterfall, the highest waterfall in Ecuador. Since then, the waterfall's collapse and subsequent erosion of the Coca River has now ruptured three oil pipelines in Cayambe Coca National Park. The erosion has, pro has progressed at an accelerated rate and has now reached other rivers, threatening a national highway and indigenous communities. Studies commissioned by the Ecuador government call for emergency infrastructure to mitigate the erosion, oh yes, which could reach the catchment dam at the Coco Coto. Sinclair hydroelectric plant with disastrous consequences. Uh, the Quichua indigenous communities affected by the oil spill going back four months say they are still waiting for justice from the government 
and pipeline operators. Yes, I bet they are. Okay. Let's see. Let's go from Ecuador to life among the turtles in the Brazilian Amazon's Trombetas River. Uh, this is an excellent story uh, focusing on both planet nibblers and planet eaters. Yes, the Brazilian Amazon's Trombetas River is well known for its exceptional biodiversity, including nesting turtles. Two traditional communities inside the reserve complain that the government has unfairly penalized them for conducting forest and river livelihoods. Can you say uh, basically turtle egg poaching uh, is what we're talking about here. Uh, I love this for the uh, social justice warriors who do not understand that planet nibblers, while not quite in the same league as the planet eaters, are doing just fine taking down a planet. Uh, the local, you know, turtle egg poachers uh, contend that while they are fined for minor infractions, meanwhile, the world's fourth li largest bauxite mining company has done extensive ecological damage to the park due to ore ship traffic and water pollution, which severely impact turtle populations. Yes, in fact, MRN's mines ore processing in bauxite waste lagoons are located inside the Saracata Cara National Forest, a protected area. MRN has also been fined often for its environmental violations there. Fines it has appealed and not yet paid. Do you think so? I was just reporting uh, yesterday how Jair Bozo Nero is calling the record number of wildfires in the Brazilian Amazon a lie. What was it? 6,800 recorded wildfires in the Brazilian Amazon, which is a lie according to Bozo Nero. But we're going to zero in on one of these uh, areas, Brazilian Amazon protected area in flames as land grabbers invade. Yes, this is the Ambi and Tal Trifuno do Jingu uh, protected area, which spans some 4.2 million acres where it's dense forest boast a rich diversity of plant and animal species and is also home to indigenous groups. But the area, the protected area, has come under pressure, becoming one of the most deforested regions in the Amazon in recent years. Overall, the protected territory has lost nearly 30% of its forest cover with some 5% in, in 2019 alone. The number of fires has soared uh, in the area. Over the last two months, NASA satellites picked up 3,842 fire alerts in the one territory. August and September when Brazil's fire season is normally at its peak, are expected to bring even more intense burning. The area has emerged as an epicenter of land grabbing and illegal mining amid 
in a surge in invaders who are betting that the Bozo Nero administration will eventually loosen or scrap protections of the land. Sounds like they have already loosened and pretty much scrapped it. All right. We're just going to stay down in South America for most of this uh, ramp. Deforestation in the Amazon is drying up the rest of Brazil. The center, west, south, and part of the southeast regions of Brazil have seen rainfall well below average in recent years. Agriculture is the first sector to feel the effects of the drought with drastic losses in production as water supply and power generation have been impacted. Agribusiness suffers the consequences of drought, but also causes the drought. This is called karma. Deforestation of the Amazon to clear land for livestock farming and logging affects the rainfall in Brazil and other Latin American countries. South America is drying up as a result of the com combined effects of deforestation and climate change. Okay, so now we're going to move, we're going to come back to the Amazon, but right now we're going to move kind of next door to the south of the Amazon to the Pantanal, where, quote, we are facing a scenario now that is catastrophic. Do you think so? Devastating wildfires that burned out of control in late 2019 and early 2020 in Brazil's Pantanal wetland are back around 1.2 million hectares, otherwise known as 3 million acres of the Pantanal have been burned so far this year. Although people have never heard of this place, the Pantanal is the world's largest tropical wetland and straddles the borders of Brazil, Paraguay, and Bolivia with Brazil containing the lion's share. The Brazilian Pantanal has seen the number of fires more than double so far this year, up some 200% over the same period last year. Sources say the fires were started by human activity, huh? likely to clear land for agriculture and are difficult to control due to a lack of access to the region and because the fires are burning underground. Some of these fires are actually burning underground, fueled by highly combustible peat and exacerbated by drought. Faced with the surging number of fires in June and July, state and federal authorities moved to reinforce bans on burning. However, early signs suggest these measures are doing little to mitigate the fires. Do you think so? Uh, okay, and then once again, for people who do not understand what all of these fires uh, in Latin America and Africa and Southeast Asia are all about, and a little reality check on this BS fire ban in Brazil. Before burning comes felling, Brazil's half-measure fire ban. Satellite data shows that fires are again burning in the Brazilian Amazon. The Bozo Nero administration responded 
by issuing a temporary ban on burning on July 15th, but Angie Bolzon of the Amazon Conservation Team argues that this decree does not address the underlying driver of the fires, which is deforestation. Okay, uh, take it away, Angie, and explain this to anybody not understanding this. Quote, the 2019 fires that overwhelmed the Amazon did not spontaneously generate. They happened largely in areas that had already been deforested and then were set ablaze to finish the conversion process to pasture for livestock and agriculture. The extensive fires were a culmination of the destruction that preceded it, a process that takes place insidiously and relentlessly driven by both land owners and land grabbers and recently emboldened by the current administration's outspoken criticism of environmental protection laws and policies. Do you think so? How about this one uh, for who would have thunk it? Paper maze and lack of transparency cloak investment in companies involved in Amazon deforestation. Hmm. Lack of transparency prevents individual investors to know where their money is going to and allows major investors to cloak their contributions to meat packers who operate in the Amazon. Despite a Brazilian central bank law, brokers ignore environmental risk assessments when suggesting clients to invest in meat packers. Yes. Okay. I love it when they uh, ask a question in a headline. Is Chinese investment, you know, in Latin America driving a sharp increase in jaguar poaching? I think we know the answer to that question. How about this for the answer? A 200 fold increase in the number of trafficked dead jaguars seized by authorities in South America and Central America between 2012 and 2018 has been reported in a new study. Researchers suggest the major surge in the jaguar trade may be facilitated by Chinese investment networks in Latin America, corruption and low incomes in source countries also are likely a significant factor boosting the trafficking of jaguars. And of course, you better believe there is a corona panic angle here, but we're not going to get into it at this point. Uh, here is a commentary uh, by this environmental attorney who has been on house arrest for the past 12 months uh, for filing a lawsuit against Chevron, and, you know, that big oil spill. Uh, in this opinion piece, Donziger argues that the action taken against him, a part of a campaign to intimidate critics of its environmental record. Do you think so? Uh, all right. Here is a reality check on uh, on this BS story about how Amazon deforestation decreased in July. 
that uh, Bozo Nero and all of those uh, lion sacks of shit down there in Brazil uh, bandying about this BS. <clears throat> okay. As Amazon tree loss worsens, political pressure grows, and Brazil hedges. Okay. Government data released Friday shows that from August 1st, 2019 to July 31st, 2020, forest loss in the Brazilian Amazon totaled 9,200 square kilometers, which is over 3,500 square miles, an increase of 34 and a half percent over the uh, same 12 month period from last year. Uh, so according to these figures, uh, 1,654 square kilometers were cleared in July of this year, which is supposedly a decline as compared to the 2,255 square kilometers cleared in July of last year. So, of course, the, these planet eaters down there are jumping on this one-month period to declare erroneously that deforestation rates in the Brazilian Amazon are falling. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, pressure grows on the Bozo Nero government to turn away from policies that analysts say are rapidly accelerating deforestation. Uh, more than 60 organizations sent a letter to the administration, uh, blah, 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 detailing proposals to contain the deforestation crisis. Uh, Okay, what else from South America? And then we're going... Okay, so for more reality check on what a decrease in deforestation looks like. All right. Amazon rainforest the size of Sao Paulo was cleared in July in Brazil. An area of rainforest larger than the city of Sao Paulo was cleared during the month of July, bringing the deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon to over 9,200 square kilometers over the past 12 months. Uh, the sharp year-over-year -year rise in deforestation uh, was confirmed by, uh, by other uh, environmental groups. Uh, also, deforestation has been trending higher since 2012, but accelerated since early 2019. Do you think so? Okay, but now we're going to go down to Argentina, where wildfires in Argentina's Paraná Delta are burning out of control. Hundreds of fires are currently burning throughout the Paraná Delta region, an important wetland ecosystem that holds a range of wildlife wildlife in Argentina raising concerns among conservationists. The Paraná River is also experiencing extremely low water levels due to a regional drought. Experts say most of the fires have been deliberately set by people, but they are now raging out of control due to drought, lack of rainfall, and low river levels. Uh, 
Okay. Here in Columbia, a protected park is buffeted by social and environmental conflicts. Uh, do you think so? Uh, good Lord. Uh, there are thousands of campesinos living in the park. Oh, good Lord. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. For the knee slapper of the week, mining industry releases first standard to improve safety of its waste storage. Yes. On August 5th, spurred by a deadly Brazilian dam disaster in early 2019, a partnership between the United Nations and industry leaders. I want you to notice this term, a partnership between the United Nations and industry leaders. That is saying the United Nations playing step and fetch it to the global corporatocracy released new guidelines for companies to manage their mining waste safely. The Global Industry Standard on Tailings Management, quote, strives to achieve zero harm to people and the environment with zero tolerance for human fatality. Hmm. However, Environmental and human rights groups say the measures in the standard do not go far enough. <laughs> oh boy. A partnership between the United Nations and Planet Eaters. Imagine that. Uh, never heard of that before. Okay. Let's see, uh, let's go check out the rest of the planet after our South America roundup. Uh, let's go to look in at a few areas, other countries on the planet. You know, every week they do a story about some new species that gets discovered and described by science and is already facing extinction, and now we're going to look at a plant. This is a new species of begonia. All right, a new ornamental begonia has been discovered on Palawan in the western, uh, in the western Philippines, uh, and the new species grows in a shady and rocky undergrowth habitat in Palawan and is already assessed to be critically endangered. The illegal plant trade and tourism, otherwise known as ecotourism, a driver of deforestation in the province, pose the biggest threat to this new plant species and other endemic flora. Do you think so? Well, actually, I guess this story is is South America, uh, in, in, anywhere in the tropics. Climate change could put tropical plant germination at risk. Under a worst case climate change scenario, more than 20% of plant species in the tropics may experience temperatures too high for their seeds to germinate by 2070, uh, according to this new analysis. Under that same worst uh, case scenario, over half of tropical species may, receive, may see reduced rates of germination by 2070. 
the analysis shows that 26% of tropical plant species and 10% of temperate species are already experiencing temperatures above their optimum. Do you think so? Uh, okay, this would be, well, South America and anywhere else. As wild areas become farmland, species that carry diseases flourish. A study in the science journal Nature has found that the conversion of wild areas into farmland, cities, and other forms of managed land increases the abundance of species that carry pathogens capable of jumping to humans. The biggest population increases were measured in species of passerine birds, which I think are pigeons, rodents, and bats. Yes. Uh, okay, sharks contaminated with plastic are calls for concern. A new study investigated microplastic ingestion in four species of shark in the North Atlantic Ocean and found that 67% of sampled sharks contain plastic particles and fibers, pointing towards the pervasiveness of plastic in the marine environment. Uh, I, I love this one. Many of the plastic particles found in the shark were fragments of synthetic cellulose the material found in polyester clothing and hygiene products such as face masks, which have been, which have become commonplace during the COVID-19 pandemic. We now have uh, discarded face masks already showing up in the digestive systems of sharks in the North Atlantic Ocean as millions and millions, if not billions and billions of these uh, corona panic face masks are being thrown. Have you seen these things? I, I mean, it's like every time I step out of my truck now when I'm going to the grocery store or Home Depot or whatever planet eating place I'm going to, uh, parking lots littered uh, with just thrown away face masks uh, piling up all over the planet, pouring into the oceans. Anyway, enough of the mask rant. Uh, Okay, what's going? This is Manga Bay's spin on that oil spill in Mauritius. Mauritius grapples with its worst environmental crisis in a generation. A ship that ran aground on a coral reef has leaked about 900 tons of fuel into the waters of uh, Mauritius, uh, yep, the oil sludge threatens the largest remaining wetland left in Mauritius and other eco ecologically sensitive areas, including three nature reserves, water currents of appear to be carrying the oil slick north along the shore, now putting mangrove forest in harm's way. Gee, can you imagine this? Uh, corruption in Indonesia. 
where anti-graft investigators have arrested a district chief and four other officials in Indonesian Borneo for allegedly taking $560,000 in bribes. Uh, an independent watchdog says the case is emblematic of how corruption in infrastructure and public procurement contracts ultimately harms the environment and local community. Uh, the watchdog group has recorded a more than 50% increase in the number of cases of corruption in Indonesia between 2015 and 2018. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's finish up since I understand I'm talking to myself. We need one story out of sub-Saharan Africa to wind up uh, this week's ecologically uh, ecological collapse round up. Probe begins into alleged deforestation. Alleged deforestation by palm oil giant Olam, the world's largest farmer. A retrospective assessment has begun of claims that the Forest Stewardship Council certified, yes, the FSC certified palm oil producer Olam destroyed thousands of hectares of wildlife rich rainforest in Gabon. Yes, the Gabonese government says its palm oil strategy is sustainable and does not threaten the country's rich biodiversity. Yes, the sustainably certified palm oil giant bulldozing thousands of thousands of acres of rainforest in equatorial Africa. Uh-huh. And, uh, but don't worry. It's sustainable, according to the Gabon government. And I can't think of any better place than that to wind up this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant. And if you are one of the few people on the planet uh, who made it to the end of this rant, uh, please do Rhett, show Rhett Butler some love and give this uh, video a thumbs up. And as long as you're over here at Collapse Chronicles, uh, give Sancho Panza some love and subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're here. And most importantly of all, get out there and enjoy this collapsing planet while you still can because it's going down the tubes as tipping points tip over. Bye, guys. And there's so long. Are you bored of all this doom and gloom? I said, Bob, I'm kind of bored of all this doom and gloom. All right. You can get back to chasing chippies now. Oh my gosh.